everybody, it's Ted DiBiase, the Million Dollar Man. If you want to have a priceless experience, then you'll stay tuned to Mega Powers Radio. And remember, everybody's got a price for the Million Dollar Man. <laughs> What's shaking, Mega Maniacs? It's Monday, February 16th, and we just finished watching tonight's edition of Monday Night Raw, the final Raw on the road to Fastlane, the odd February pay-per-view that is really this odd marker between Royal Rumble and WrestleMania. Things should be heating up. I don't know if it's quite gotten there, but at the least, I think we had a really cool ending to the show. The rest was kind of fluffed. Whatever happened with it, we'll talk about it. We'll get your opinions about it on the most interactive post-Raw experience available here on Mega Powers radio.com the raw post show we want to hear all of what you got to say out there you can join us via the phone lines we'll be opening up around 11 30 if you want to get yourself in queue use your phone to dial area code 760-512-7247 already got a couple callers waiting patiently there but if you want to get there soon Get yourself in line so you can get there nice and early. Also got people hanging out in the chat room. Shout outs to y'all who showed up early. We got Wazili, Silent Wind of Doom. Miss Takata, who's Drew. Steven Wago, who's our own Steven Wago. Spark Out Momo, who's Tony. Ferris419. And back out! How's that? Oh, Did I give shit. enough enthusiasm for that? Oh, <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, oh, Jesus Christ, King. Uh, but how the conversation is going to be starting here is with us panelists introducing myself. My name is Mike Payton, station director here at Mega Powers Radio. Joining me this evening is the leader of the Drew Crew, the Dragon, Mr. Drew White. I'm also the not so station director here at Mega Powers Radio. I want to point that out. Uh, you are absolutely correct. Thank you for clarifying. Oh, you're welcome. Also with us is the host of Unanimous Decision MMA, addicted to anime, Wago Rance, and a guy who just does lots of shit, Mr. Steven Huego. I do do a lot of shit, and it's a good job I'm here. I mean, I built, <laughs> do do. Me- I mi- I built Mega Powers Radio. Yeah, I mean, all, all those chemistry things that you bring to the show, like, uh, I don't know. Saying the word stuff. cunt. <laughs> Bells. <laughs> Also with us is the lead man of Fanboys Anonymous, Smarkout Moment, a mango tree, whatever the heck else he particularly feels like doing this month, Mr. Tony Mango. What's up? <laughs> Stand up and say what's up. <laughs> Stony I've mango. been doing that so much since uh, the Royal Rumble, I don't know why. Fucking hard truth. What, what's up or ooh? <laughs> <laughs> the what's up, although I have been doing the ooh quite a bit ever since our Uso jokes. <laughs> you oos, oos. <laughs> No, how about Tyson Kidd actually calling him Oos? Oh, no, that was great. He's like more than the Ryback. <laughs> now, if we can get Roman Reigns to be the disrespectful Roman Reigns character that we've been making up, then that'd be even better. So uh, let me ask you guys the usual thing. I usually start to uh, get the conversation rolling here on the show. What's the number one thing you took away from this edition of Raw tonight? Drew, why don't you head us off? Uh, the one thing I took away from uh, this Raw was that it was okay in the beginning, boring in the end, and it ended strong, I suppose. Also, millions of dollars. That's all we need. Now, did it end making Roman Reigns look strong? That's the important part. I think, I don't know. Anytime that it looks like Daniel Bryan got the upper end on anyone that's bigger than them, they technically don't look strong, but... It made it made me want to see the match because I, I was gonna watch. I'm watching the pay per view on Sunday, anyways. But it made both of them look strong. It made them both look like that they are gonna just beat the shit out of each other at Fast Lane. So I guess technically it made them both look strong, if that's possible. Someone who did look strong tonight that was Rusev. He looked like a fucking chump. Oh no, whoa, Miss, whoa. Mr. Wago, what'd you take away from tonight's show? I took away the WWE got some of their shit together tonight and actually promoted the pay per view or the special event, or whatever we're calling it now, because we got Bad News Barrett and Dean Ambrose finally inked, and that whole, um, their whole chemistry's been kind of fun, so 
that's uh, going to be a fast lane. I'm looking forward to that. And the main event, which I'm assuming is going to be Roman Reigns versus Daniel Bryan, they've done nothing but continue to build tension, and tonight's ending was a lot of fun. So I've got no real major negatives about this show tonight. It was just WWE finally getting their shit together. Better late than never. Didn't you barely watch it? I barely watched the first 20 minutes. I oh, okay. I was watching the Paul Heyman documentary, and I kept going, should I keep watching this? This is awesome. Now nah, I've got to watch Raw. <laughs> well, I just have to prepare. Oh, she said documentary, like very Americanized. I'm proud of you. Hey, <laughs> uh, I, want, I want to hear Sean say it now. Fucking hell, that's a Raw documentary. I ain't bought it yet. <laughs> 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 Uh, Tony, what did you take away from tonight's show? You know, I'm not really into uh, getting the fast lane yet. The bottom of this show did a lot more than the whole rest of the show. But my biggest takeaway... So, out so of- you're saying the show was a power bottom? Yeah, I guess you could say that. It's a good bear. Uh, the biggest takeaway I had for this whole episode was um, the primetime players thing, which is kind of sad in a way, but kind of cool because I like the primetime players. So I agree kinda with Drew. Been- Kind of an odd time to reunite an old tag team, and out of nowhere at that, like, who would have seen that one coming? Actually, and where are they going to slot them in at this point of the season? Except for me or Drew. I think it kind of. I, well, I was going to say it kind of makes sense because I believe their one match they had against each other last year was at Elimination Chamber, which was a February pay per view last year. So they just need a one year hiatus and goddamn Darren Young looks so different now compared to what he did the last time I saw him. Yeah, he grew a beard. He he looks like um he looks like Sanford and Son. You know <laughs> no when uh, you know that Two like that. You know you know you know when black people do designs on their side of their heads. I was like, "Oh man, he went to the streets and back." Like like David Otunga used to. He did. Hey, when David Otunga was, I thought it was GM, all- when he was the GM and he shaved roar into his head, I thought that was cool. Oh really? yeah, oh yeah, fuck up. I forgot about that. Yeah, I thought it was cool. I mean, it looks cool on some people. David Otunga, you look good. You know what it doesn't look good on? He's dead family. Yeah, exactly. Oh, my goodness. Um, Scott, chat in the chat room here, we got Silent Wind of Doom saying, I'm starting to get really hyped for Taker appearing and scaring the crap out of Bray Wyatt at Fastlane. Now, getting a number of Bray Wyatt promos throughout this night of him in a dark room they're showing him with a nail and a hammer and eventually he's hammering it into it looked like what was probably a casket which i think is what we're supposed to take away it seems like all roads are heading for bray wyatt and undertaker the use of the casket though i mean considering we had that casket match with kane and daniel bryan a few weeks ago maybe that's just a reminder of us are, are we getting a casket match for bray wyatt and taker you guys have interest in that that'd be yeah. awesome if they're going, I'm going to be pissed off, and if they do go that route, because they because they just had a casket match, kind of takes away from it. I don't think we will, but I would like that. I'll be I'd rather with... see a buried alive match or something though. But oh, um... yeah, that would be interesting too. They do the casket match. I wanted them to do a backstage segment of whoever loses of them getting out of the casket and breathing heavily, like they did with uh, fucking Kane on SmackDown, because that was funny. You know what would be kind of cool, but it's kind of like going to the well, and it wouldn't be as good as the original? Boiler Room Brawl. He's backstage mm. in a lot of these things. But you know what I wouldn't want, though? And this kind of interferes with an idea that I had that um, they'll never do. So, you know, it, it's like if they're not going to do it anyway, then you might as well. I kind of am hoping that this whole Cody Rhodes and Goldust thing turns into another backlot brawl. They can't do it in Hollywood because they don't have any pay-per-views in Hollywood, but... They could do that as like the no. final gimmick no, match dude, for him. Re- WrestleMania is in California. You could totally do it in Hollywood. Yeah, you, yeah, you could do it, it at Santa Clara. Yeah, it's, oh, yeah, it's shit. In Santa Clara. That is, I'm thinking that it's Texas. That's next year. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what the fuck? Might as well do that. And you can't do that and a boiler room brawl match. So, um, you know, if you give me the two options or whatever, give me Hollywood backlot brawl and casket match. And. I w- you know, that would kick ass. I wouldn't want them to do the boiler room brawl with Bray Wyatt and the Undertaker for the sole purpose of we wouldn't see Undertaker's theme. Or at least him entrance wise. That would not be cool. Unless they have him walk out the ring and then go back to the boiler room brawl. That'd be kinda of funny. <laughs> and they start out in the ring and then walk backstage. <laughs> yeah, though the chit chat like hey, so uh Yeah, be careful, you know, some of these boilers you know, might be a little hot. 
<laughs> By God, pretty much summed up what I would want to see if they did that. I want Taker to beat Bray, bury him alive, and then Bray comes back all supernatural like, like zombie Bray or like superpowers Bray because he needs more of that integrated into him. As much as people wanted to hate on like the hologram, I actually thought that was kind of neat and they need to work more of that into his character. I think that they still Agreed. need to pay off this thing with the baby. The baby? Mm-hmm. The babe? They keep showing in his um, entrance the whole pregnant woman. It, oh, you're right. Like the little, like, um, the little, like, whatever the heck you call it. The bet! Yeah. <laughs> The bet. <laughs> That's how it feels about this child. Bet. Next time I go to a casino, I'm just gonna go bet. Well, a- what I think, I think that's supposed to be a reference. Like, you know, life starts in the womb, and specifically, like he has his connection well, to sister Abby. <laughs> Silent wind of woo. Life begins in the womb. Uh, it, it's a reference to his connection to sister Abigail because they both came from the same womb. I bet there's some kind of connection with that. Yeah, I don't think they'll say, yeah, we came from the same womb on television. <laughs> I wonder weird. if they'll ever introduce Sister Abigail as an actual character. No, I think she's dead. Yeah, it was a fucking chair. <laughs> yeah, well, so was Kane. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> but come on, that's it's, what gotta, it's gotta be Kane. Like man do that. It's gotta be Sister Abigail. <laughs> <laughs> she comes and rips the door off of a steel cage. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they bring Charlotte up to the roster. <laughs> oh, they can find a better girl for that. Oh, I'm just joking about yeah, that. Yeah, but it'd be funny as fuck. Somebody know. It'd be funny as fuck, though. Yeah. See, if they didn't already bring up Paige, they could have used her. You got this really weird-looking pale chick. Well, she, just let her hair, hair get a little dingy. She can't rip the fucking door off the cage. Nah, they would have to do she something. Could also, she just got to scream before she does it. Nah, they would have to do it. No name. It would have to be someone that no one would know. She, it would be like the fucking, I don't know. It would be like when Husky Harris came to the main roster and then she would have got the Husky Harris chance except with Paige or something stupid like that. No, people wouldn't have known she was Paige. I'm saying if they didn't debut her yet. Oh, if this was her uh, first time coming up. Nah, NXT was still big around that time, though. So I bet if they did, I don't know. I think she in a scenario she where they don't. Jesus in a scenario Christ, where they do. Nah, she's Jesus pretty Christ. pale. People know who she is. Look, I can't picture any of the model-looking WWE divas being Bray's sister. No, uh-huh. uh What about uh, wouldn't, it awesome if, wouldn't it be awesome if it just turned out to be Alicia Fox? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's just Bo Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> because he has the long hair all this yeah. time he thought he was his sister <laughs> they told me that I couldn't be a woman but all I did was believe and it accomplished <laughs> uh, uh, well getting a little bit back on track what, this match at Wrestlemania um, if they guys, if these two guys faced each other how much time would they have to allot just for them to make their fucking entrances well, here's the thing. You don't want them out in the ring too long because Bray Wyatt's awful when he's controlling the heat and The Undertaker can barely move now, so... Can Bray carry him? Fuck him. I think up. he can carry him on his shoulders, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's about it. That's about it. Um, so, th- that whole match needs to be all light shows and entrances. Give him ten minutes, let Undertaker do his thing, and then put Bray over. That's how I do it. I want them literally to start having like Jedi sparks coming out of each other's hands and battling in the ring. That's the only way they're going to make this match entertaining. It's going to be like have- that episode three fight with Yoda and Palpatine, like catching the lightning and shit. Mm-hmm. They, they have to pull some crap like that because these guys just having a standard wrestling match is not going to cut it. They can throw a glacier in there and he could freeze in like Sub-Zero. <laughs> Uh, who's that, like, magician guy, Phantasmo, or something like that? Uh, you don't even know what I'm uh, talking about, do you? David Blaine. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. Straight magic, yeah. yeah. They need to have the match, and the finish should be the Undertaker opens the caskets, put Bray in there, and there's a hologram of Paul Bearer's ghost in there, which allows Bray to fucking beat him. Now, they need to do a big retcon, and they need to have it turn out that the fake Undertaker from SummerSlam 94 or 92 or whatever it was that that was the real one the whole time. <laughs> and that, that's why he lost this match with Brock Lesnar because the real Undertaker didn't lose it. So then he can come back and they can just be like, nah, 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 we're starting all over again. <laughs> Ooh, 
there's a pretty good spot you could do that. Silent Wind of Doom actually came up with this. Bray Wyatt goes to do his little crab walk trying to freak out Undertaker, but the Undertaker does his little sit up. Oh, like right yes. in front of him, like face to face. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah but Bray. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the way the, the way you make that moment is Bray just needs to piss himself laughing. <laughs> like literally, you need to get a close up of like the wet stain. Yeah, <laughs> he, he has to be wearing his white pants, and you see the yellow stain coming into it. Oh God, that's <laughs> like a Harper stain. Undertaker, on his shirt. Full, Undertaker full fits because he doesn't want to touch him. <laughs> and then well, he gives those pants to Luke Harper to match the stained T-shirt. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so we're all, huh? <laughs> um, this is why we're that's... not allowed to book it, I think. It's I think that's, enough, combo. that's enough conversation about uh, about Bray Wyatt and Undertaker. How about uh, Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns closing out the show tonight? Having multiple segments throughout the show where they're interacting with each other or having some type of interview. Really, these two guys being centered as the big focus going into WrestleMania. I don't know how they can not have this end up as a triple threat match or some type of multi-man match that's not just Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar with the amount of focus that Daniel Bryan has been receiving through this. Because if he doesn't end up in that match, what the fuck does he do? What do you mean? There's always that Mr. Ziggles. Hey, he's always got Seamus. Seamus yeah. needs a guy. Right, right. Yeah, they <sighs> still haven't yeah. done anything with Seamus. You, you know, it really bothers me that they're being really ambiguous about when Seamus is coming back to. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking that means he's just going to surprise us at some point in Fastlane. He'll probably cost Daniel Bryan. Uh, what are you talking about? It's that not, not going to surprise us. so fucking lame if that's how that works out. Yeah, meaning it'll probably happen. Yeah, exactly. It's dope. The only way I'm okay with that is if it ends up that it's a fatal four way and Sheamus is just involved. I'd be okay hmm. with that. You know, honestly, Sheamus never really got a main event spot, and I wouldn't. It would never surprise me if he ever got in the main event of a Mania, either like this. But I wouldn't be completely down for that or like against it. And honestly, when like Brock Lesnar first came in, one of the like brute was guys Sheamus. that I wanted yeah. him to face was Sheamus, so I wouldn't mind seeing them get to tussle for a little bit. I was hoping that Sheamus would be one of his like quick uh, wins, because I didn't I didn't want him fighting Cena again. I wanted him knocking off like a few upper mid-card guys, like Sheamus, like your Dolph Ziggler's, but we never got it. Yeah, because he never showed up. But he's not supposed to, right? <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, you could just not use the matches that he has with John Cena. Uh, that's true. That is so true. Yeah. Every fucking match with Cena. I don't know. We should get to see Lesnar and fucking Seth Rollins at least. That was something. With, with John Cena. Uh, you, it's kind of. But uh, Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns showing that they're the young guns, but these guys are going to be able to sell pay per views and possibly carry this company throughout the rest of this year and going forward into future sure. years. You guys agree? Yeah, well, yes. Reigns more than Brian. I think you need Why to you say that. Oh, I I, okay, I say that more so because not not entirely putting Brian's health into the equation, but I don't know how long Brian will be able to wrestle if his health isn't at 100%. And also, I feel like, I really feel like that he is someone that will lose steam eventually, which would be terrible because he's my favorite wrestler out of everyone. But I, I think, cannot I, believe how strong this yes chance still is. Yeah, like honestly, all these years later, he's exactly. not losing steam. He is very much over, and he's always going to be over. It's gonna be. It's a. They'd have to push him like they did with John Cena for him to become turned. Like for the fans it, it, to turn on him. Honestly, I think out of like every one of the past couple of years, they probably booked Brian the best out of everyone. Which is terrible to say because Brian was put at the time we thought it was a complete shit like eighteen seconds. Uh, throw. I disagree. Okay. I disagree that he was booked correctly because well, sure he ended up in those top spots, but that was because their hand was forced. Like, there's plenty of people have gone on record and saying, yeah, Daniel Bryan was going to wrestle. I still rest. don't believe that. I don't believe. I I think. I don't think I it was think, the plan. I think. But I, I think, think smarks are being. Plan. I think smarks are being worked. I, think, I don't. I'll be honest. I think even Daniel Bryan. Even Daniel Bryan said he was meant to wrestle Sheamus. Exactly. I think. I think we're all being worked on that just I, because they know it. Because they're trying to keep the people's support of Daniel Bryan, and if they know Daniel Bryan was being put into this stupid, meaningless match with Sheamus, of course they're going to be pissed. You I give think, him way right. too much credit. I think Brian is someone that he would have won the WWE Championship by now anyways, regardless of whether or not he got played. In, only in present-day WWE. Can you imagine Daniel Bryan trying to come up in, like, 1989? <laughs> or, or, like, 2004? Even, even in the Attitude Era, he would have been fucked. Exactly. He would have been, he would have been a mid-card Intercontinental Championship type guy, and he probably would have been really over, but that's all he would have ever. He would have been, like, a Val Venus. I don't even think he would have gotten to that level. 
You think it would really? be Jarber stand? No, he was he was too good to just. No. I, the issue is is the chant. I, Brian is not much outside of that chant. Like he was well liked before the chant, but you know the chant really fucking helped him. I don't know if he'd be able to get a chant like that to go over in like 1999 compared to now. Mainly because there's yeah. so much else going on. It, the reason that chant wouldn't get over during the Attitude Era is because it's too fucking positive. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> also, See, there, was no, there was no Diego Sanchez for him to steal the catchphrase off either. If you're yeah, going in sure. like the uh, Monday Night War kind of thing, Daniel Bryan would be the type of guy that went to WCW and ended up being in the cruiserweight uh, division. Yeah, he'd be wrestling Dima Linka. Exactly. No, but see, he's the type of guy who would go there and get frustrated and then come back and become a bigger star in WWE. If they let Jericho? him. He, Jericho? He would have been the Jericho. Yeah, he would have been the Jericho. Yeah. So yeah, that match is happening. <laughs> well, as far as the match that they're having at Fastlane... I don't know what the fuck's going on. Like I said, I think this has to end some way with both of them going into the main event. If it's only one of them, then Reigns. But how you get there, besides the Sheamus thing, which I really hope they don't ha- have happen, I-, I don't know what else. What-, what else could they do, guys? Um, Any ideas? I think they need, to stick to their, they need to stick to their guns and put Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar on in the main event. Yeah. Um, I don't care if it costs Daniel Bryan. The reality of it is, Reigns won the Rumble. That's the guy they stuck with. So now they need to stick to their guns, not just because it'll make um, them look bad, but just because it's the right thing to do. And if uh, way they could do it technically with both of them in the main event, they could have just have the match in a draw of some sorts. And then they could just pick, yeah, you're both in the main event. Why not? Sure. Go ahead. Do what you got to do. Or Brock Lesnar would come out and just be, yeah, I could fucking be both of you or something stupid like that. Now, Tony, before you were saying that uh, there was someone else you wanted to add to Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns as people carrying the year of 2015, who is that going to be? I think that this is going to be more so that era uh, where I wasn't watching uh, the early 2000s and stuff where we had uh, The Rock, Triple H, Stone Cold, Kurt Angle, Brock Lesnar, like a big assortment of big names. Mm -hmm. And there's not one standout guy. This isn't the the Stone Cold show, the John Cena show, or the Hulk Hogan show. This is kind of another one, another year. It was kind of like the Bret Hart, Diesel, Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, like a group of like six people. Gen. Yeah. So I think that you've got Brian, you've got Reigns, you've got Dolph Ziggler, Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins, maybe, maybe somebody like a Ryback if they got behind him, but I doubt that they will. Um, was right back on the show tonight? Yes, he was. Yeah, he, came he did out. a running. Oh, yeah, yeah. the running. Yeah, my bad. Now, that's a much better way to book because you have a lot of ways to cover yourself if somebody goes down. Um, my question is, how many of these guys are they going to build up to carry? Because how long is it going to be until you have all these big talents down in NXT that's going to come up? And I feel like a lot of them are really going to be what's fleshing out the upper card in five years. It depends on how long Big Show and Kane's around. I'm just going to say Finn, Balor, Finn Balor's going to take this fucking uh, roster by storm. That guy is money. Is he millions of dollars money? Yep, millions of dollars of money. He's no, going to <laughs> take someone's spot, I guarantee you. You know what, one awkward week, they should have him join the primetime players and just be like, hey, yo, it's the white guy with the two black guys. Millions of dollars. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, Tony, what do you think about that? Like a fucking Oreo. Yeah, what do you think about Finn Below joining the primetime players? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm interested to see that. <laughs> Make maybe, Oreo, you, maybe you could, like, paint a dollar sign on his chest. <laughs> The uh, situation with the NXT guys, though, um, I think we're not going to see as huge of a push too fast for a lot of them. So they'll be coming up and, you know, the people like Zami Zayn and Kevin Owens is going to be a huge fucking player. That's for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's uh, fat. <laughs> but I think that a lot <laughs> of these guys are going to be more in the intercontinental range for a little bit, which will give the people like the Dean Ambroses and the Dolph Ziggler's that are right now hovering that area they'll get that official push up. Uh, Some of the tag teams are going to go away. Some of the people like, and I hate to say this as like my go-to guy, but somebody like a Fandango is going to end up getting released in the next few years. Yeah. Maybe even this year. 
I thought he was going to get released last year, to be honest. He's means nothing now. He really yeah, does. So, I thought Cesaro was definitely going to be someone that might get released this year, depending on how some things work out. He's another name I would put in there. I can see him getting released next year. Maybe not this year. He's, it depends on the tag division thing, but Cesaro is not going to be one of those top guys. I think you're underestimating the power of having a good hand around. I think Fandango and Cesaro, for that matter, are the kind of guys you keep around for a long time. Someone like a Shelton Benjamin yeah, that's just on the roster to, to slot in and be someone you can trust whenever he has to. Yeah, but at the same time, you can't have everyone can't be that. Some people are going to have to go. And no, I'm, I'm not so. saying Fandango should ever be world champion. No, I'm not, not that. that but no, like, <laughs> no, no, no. Of course, Faith fucked it. If we had a dancer as a world champion, I wonder how that would fucking go over him and his gay fucking um, hairdresser. His name oh. is Chris Jericho. Oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> but no, um, just the idea of having like, yeah, those guys are good to have around. But if we say that with like everyone, like, oh, we could keep him around. He'll be a good hand. We'll just have a bunch of guys no. who are fucking good hands and then no one will fucking be well, called I'm not out. saying, but you have a lot of guys like that who yeah, are reliable. I'm not saying keep around fucking Darren Young for five years if he's not getting over. Ah, come on, guys. But it's Darren a, Young. <laughs> a guy like Fandango has far more talent than majority of those guys. He's but worth keeping around. He yeah. is. But Darren Young is part of the primetime players. So, so we can't get rid of him anytime soon. And he's also well, plus, plus he's they almost gay. might get a lawsuit if they try to. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's gay. They can't get rid of him now. That's why he probably said it. Just so the fact that he won't get fucking released anytime soon. So, I mean, if you don't know, the WWE went on some tour in some some other country. Was it Dubai or someplace? Um, they, they went overseas somewhere, basically where where homosexuality is is not cool yeah like, it's just one of those countries where they're still using sand as toilet paper uh, it, yeah <laughs> I, I, and i'm not even saying just like face. you know they might like gawk at them in public i mean like they might do some crazy ass violent shit to I a think gay it's person the middle east type so of thing in, no it was, it was the middle east somewhere yeah. was, I, I forgot where it was exactly it but middle anyway they, they they went Abu on Dhabi. the tour <laughs> fucking let me tell my fucking story <laughs> god oh, damn it so they went on tour there and they decided to keep Darren Young cut out from the tour. Darren Young decided to make a big stink about it on Twitter, saying that he was being silenced, that he wasn't allowed to go on tour to this place. Like, come on, they were doing it for your fucking protection. Mm -hmm. Chill the fuck out. I'm all for, like, you know, wanting to fight for your equality and stuff like that. Fight the war at home, all right? This wasn't your hill to die on, as CM Punk would say. Fucking let it go. Yeah, you can just quit the company and just fucking join the UFC if he wants to. It's well, a different whatever story happened. if they would have been like, look, we can't have you win the tag titles because you're gay. Then you have a fucking argument. But if they're like, yo, we think that these people might kill you, so you might want to sit this one out. That's not about oppression. That's about fucking safety. Mm -hmm. It would be the same exact thing as when they did the whole thing with the Divas not that long ago. They went to some country where the Divas were like you know, horribly objectified and they were like, uh, you know, well, we don't, we don't let them in here unless they have like everything other than their eyes covered and stuff. So guess what they didn't do? They didn't have the fucking divas. Like, that's, yeah, they, you know. yeah, they didn't put a big fucking stink about it, did they? So that would do <laughs> good comment here. <clears throat> Actually, literally, if he had gone, they would have killed him on that there hill. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, with that, I think we can um, go ahead and open up the chat room we have here, or open up the phone lines, I should say. If you want to get yourself in line, dial in area code 760-512-7247. Again, that's 760-512-7247. You are also able to join us via Skype if you press the little Skype icon at the top of the broadcast page. And if you aren't listening to us live, you can't join us by those means, but you're a fool. Join us live every single Monday following Raw, so you're able to join that. I'm sorry I insulted you. You're cool. Thanks for listening. Let's bring out our first caller for this evening. He is our favorite from the 540. You know what the deal is. Let's get him on here. He's not my favorite. It's 412. Snarf, 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 Starf, 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 starf. <laughs> oh goodness! Five four zero, you there? Hey guys, what's up? Not much, man. How you doing this evening? What'd you think of Raw? I think Raw. I think Raw was okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I was <laughs> hypnotized tonight. What's like big, like Biggie Smalls? Really? No. Was it because the big show's gone? I was hypnotized. Hey, tonight. 
Oh, she looked absolutely fantastic. We even talk about that. Paige, I guess having her outfit stolen from her by the Bella Twins, runs out of her dressing room in a towel, grabs one of the rosebuds in their little rave outfits. It was like this really hot fairy Halloween costume. Oh, my God. Absolutely fantastic. That's a great way to implement the rosebuds, to be honest with you. I think that costume was very sexy, you know? Oh, it was. Yeah, it was scandalous. I'm sorry, guys. I'm try- I know I'm trying to keep it PG, but, but no, it's okay. Just... <laughs> you don't need to keep it PG. She was fucking hot. <laughs> she, was, she, was she was smoking, smoking hot. hot. Oh, you just, just know. You just know she was hot. You know she I'd smoked like her. <laughs> but anyway. That's <laughs> no, anyway, like her nigger move. <laughs> but anyway, I will say Raw was okay. It was okay. Some things I didn't good. agree with. Some things I didn't disagree with. Hmm. What were the things you disagreed with? <laughs> I I disagreed with the disqualification finish between Rollins and Ziggler. Okay. I disagreed with um. Hmm. I disagreed huh. with with Natalia and Tyson against Naomi and I, I Jimmy. <laughs> No, that made sense to the narrative that they had to do there. They're building up tension between Natty and Tyson. That's cool. Let, let them build their little marriage tiff. Yeah, but, but but let's talk about what you said, what you mentioned earlier on in the show, because I was wa- I was waiting for your call, and we were talking, and you guys were talking about Ray Wyatt versus The Undertaker. Oh, I always yes. feel like I should get on that topic, too. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I did see Bray open, have a hammer, and I did see him bang the casket like mm-hmm. like he was making the casket, and I was wondering if he made it for the Undertaker. Undertaker. So, I don't think this match will be a casket match. Oh. I just think it's going to be a straight-out fight. Oh, okay. So, it's not even going to be a match. It's just going to be a fight. And, oh, it's gonna be a well. It's gonna be a match, but but it's gonna be a good match. And I think it will I be think, a match. I, and I think Bray Wyatt can match to the supernatural powers yeah, of the match. Undertaker. Indeed. Um, so, Jeff, what'd you think about uh, the Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan pull apart at the end there? Oh, I, oh let me tell you, that was crazy. I tell yeah. you, I tell you, I've <laughs> never seen a brawl like that in my life. I was like, I was like, okay, it's gonna get, okay, it's gonna get serious right now. But I'm really looking forward to this. Business matchup. has picked like, up. By God, by God. God. Hey, Surprise, hey, motherfucker! I said Fucking no. ill. I thought we said no, no uh, impersonations. Yeah, oh, fucking hell, you better not do any impersonations. That'd be shit. Nah, I'm not gonna do no fucking impersonations. That wouldn't be right. That wouldn't well, be right. Did That'd you think fucking arsehole? Awesome. Oh, fucking hell, bloody hell, bastard. Did you guys forget to introduce Sean? That's very fucking rude. He's been silent this whole episode because of you. But Jesus. anyway. <laughs> anyway. On to Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns. Yeah, I thought that brawl was very crazy. Very scary. Mm-hmm. And and Roman Reigns, he really impressed me tonight. He was talking with the fans, signing autographs in the middle of Daniel Bryan's match, and what? taking a selfie as well. Never thought anyone would do that ever. The absolute unmitigated Instagram. audacity of Roman Reigns starting to show a little bit of a uh, heelish tendencies, but not quite. Still getting lots of cheers from the fans. Very interesting line they're straddling with Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan, for that matter, who's been kind of a dick throughout this evening, too. <laughs> it's almost like you don't want to cheer for either of them. At the same time, I want to cheer for them both. No, it's an interesting position to be I in. Think Go ahead, Drew. I think we're doing more something along the lines of maybe not so much, but a little bit of like a UFC thing where they have like actual beef with each other. And they're actually using that to their advantage this time because they're making it seem like it's something actual. Like, you know, how like some people have like those like shove fights, but like during interviews before matches and shit like that. I, I thought that reminded me a little bit of something like that. And I thought it was very interesting, something they don't do very often. Difference is, at least in UFC, they establish um, a heel. It, 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 fuck it, who knows? 
<laughs> Don't even know. <laughs> um, my, my last one also is uh, Triple H and Sting, too. I think that confrontation at Fast Lane should be really good. Because like Triple H said, it's WCW against WWE okay. in a confrontation. This is, it is indeed. And Ric Flair coming out tonight, really helping sell that. But listen, Jeff, we got a couple other callers coming in. We got to keep the ball rolling. Before you go, though, your high point and low point for tonight's Raw. I guess the high point would be Ric Flair trying to talk some sense into Triple H. Ooh. And also, my low point has to be Stardust and Gold Dust. Oh, by what? the way, by the, by the way. <laughs> Seth Rollins, I saw that Seth Rollins photo, too. (laughs) Oh, yeah, did did you? (laughs) (laughs) Well, good for you, buddy. (laughs) That's on that NXT girl, too. Oh, yeah. (laughs) All right, guys. Well, I'm going to get out of here. You guys have a good night. And by the way, keep finding fake JD, okay? Listen, we are working so hard for that, dude. Fake JD, well, it will be found. We we haven't had a call from either either JDs. It's been completely JD-less here tonight. I don't know what the hell is going on. Hey, yeah, if you could think you could find JD for us, uh, why don't you go and do that, Jeff? Okay, thank you, guys. I'll talk to you uh, next week. Bye-bye. We'll, we'll be here, bud. Enjoy Fast Lane. Have a good night. Hey, you too. All right, we're going to keep the ball rolling here. Works. Oh, Jesus Christ. We're going to keep the ball rolling here on the Raw Post Show on Mega Powers Radio. Going to our next caller. They're coming in from the 646 area code. Caller from 646. You're live on the Raw Post Show. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, it's Aisha again. What's up, guys? Hey, Aisha. What is up, homegirl? What do you think about Raw tonight? Yeah, I'm doing good. How are you guys? Absolutely tremendous. We're, we're having fun here. Last Raw before Fast Lane. Are you excited? Um, tonight was going to show, which was pretty okay. I guess I'm a little bit excited. <laughs> are, are you going to watch? Right. Yeah, I'll watch. Uh, it's a pay-per-view, so, you know, like, sometimes their law sucks and their pay-per-view is delivered, so why not? <laughs> okay. <laughs> what match are you most particularly excited for after the show? Um, I guess the main event, um, mm. and, uh, Let's see. Probably the side match between the Usos and Tyson Kim too, And the complication of being in Triple H, because you know, Triple H is my guy. So you know, I have to do that. <laughs> Oh, no kidding. Him and Ric Flair mm-hmm. really delivering it, showing that these old timers may be old. They still know how to show these guys how to put butts in seats, though. Ric Flair still as sympathetic as ever, still hitting all the lines, still getting the crowd to say woo thousands of times a night. Triple H showing that he's still got a mean side. He still can do that deep, grovelly mm-hmm. voice and sound like a total badass. I was impressed with both of them. Kind of odd that it's 2015 now. Triple H and Ric Flair still can steal the show in a night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that show. Man, I like the concept that they put like WWE versus WCW. So it's mm-hmm. really cool. Oh, I so, loved everything. It was gold and everything. So Aisha, our our last caller ended the call talking about uh, those Seth Rollins photos. Did you catch a glimpse of those? <laughs> I can hear her <laughs> blushing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was actually on Twitter and I just happened to see everybody posting it and it happened to show up. I was like, holy shit, oh my god. <laughs> oh, it just happened to show up and, and it saved. <laughs> it just happened to become the background on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, god. Oh, so that happened. Yeah. <laughs> um, What is... Uh, what are you hoping to be the outcome for Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns going into WrestleMania? Who do you hope to see end up there in the main event at Mania? Well, like, to me, I it just makes sense for Roman Reigns to win the Royal Rumble. It's their guy. Like, mm. he won the Royal Rumble, so they picked him, picked him, so, like, why not? And Daniel Bryan being inserted, like, it, it would just be weird because they did it last year. And let's be honest, Daniel Bryan doesn't look credible to um, Brock Lesnar. I'm not trying to be Brock Lesnar, but it just mm-hmm. makes sense for Roman Reigns to be there. 
He, he is the guy that they know. have been building for for the last year. I mean, it seems like it, mm-hmm. you could have predicted from SummerSlam that Roman Reigns was going to be the guy that was going to win the Royal Rumble. So mm-hmm. it, regardless of how that reaction went down in Philly, and we were there for it, it, it was not a, a pleasant one for Roman Reigns. I think he's still going to be the guy yeah. they end up going with. Uh, what about Sheamus? you think Sheamus is going to factor into this? Yeah. Oh, that's the um, proper reaction to have for Seamus. <laughs> <laughs> let me just say, I just hope they turn him heel because he works better as a heel. Mm-hmm. And it's been way too long. I think most people work yeah. better as a heel these days. As well as him like, getting injured. <laughs> so he, he came back at the Rumble last year, then months later he gets injured again, and now he's coming back. We have a by God in our chat room here actually poses an interesting question. Not exactly the question he asked, but I'm going to ask you, do you watch anything besides WWE? Um, let's see. I watch a lot of reality shows. No, I mean, I, I mean, like, I mean, anything wrestling wise, have you ever watched any other promotions? Oh, do you watch or Chrissy Knows Best? That's <laughs> promotions of yeah you ever you ever watch like tna or new japan or even nxt uh, you watch um, nxt um yeah i definitely watch nxt i'm the biggest nxt mark like oh my god this like uh takeover rival uh, amazing as always i'm starting to watch people are talking about lucha underground so i'm gonna start to watch that Ooh. um i haven't really i don't watch TNA at all. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's no Kenny Dias, the main um, man. If you want to have a priceless yeah, experience, then you'll stay tuned to Mega know, Powers Radio. And remember, everybody's got a price yeah, for the main man. Um, going to new chance, I just saw I saw Wrestle Kingdom Nine, and I thought it was an amazing show. I was like, oh, no, nope. watch new channel. It'll be good. Um, there you go. By God, she does know New Japan. So in your face. <laughs> people in the chat room being haters so what'd you think about rival give us your thoughts about that like that was an awesome awesome event i'm especially happy for sasha banks getting that women's title awesome main event go ahead and give your thoughts Mm -hmm. oh my god i loved it my bro sasha won the ap title i mean it's the woman's title so i like that and the the main event is like i mean people are like saying it's not the best man but it's the fact that they told an awesome story in that ring like the story was just beautiful Mm-hmm. Like the fact that two months, what, what Kevin Owens would say, two months to the day, you're like he won the title in the match, and it makes sense. Like he's all about like like KO and like whatever, and he won the match by KO, so it just makes sense. Like the story was just beautiful and everything. And Ben Baylor and Neville, amazing match. I saw the, I actually saw their New Japan um match. Uh, they they could. Yeah, they could have done a little better, but hey, I'll take what I get. It was amazing, and everything on the show is amazing. NFT is always going to be the best. Um, yeah. yeah. Top notch. Going to be very hard for Fast Lane to top it. I have to say. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, come on. Like, it's not even a, it's not even a, like NXT is better than. Raw. They they should like, really stop that. They, they should stop putting the NXT shows like a week or two before they have their WWE pay-per-views because it always yeah. is going to make it look worse. Like, what, didn't they do that mm-hmm. last time with, them, with our evolution going yes. into TLC? Yeah. And then T- they were like, oh, they're going to have to work extra hard to make TLC super good to look better than TakeOver. And then at TLC, it was like fucking awful. <laughs> <laughs> like, I knew after I watched our movies, I was literally like, yeah, they, they can't top this. <laughs> And like the reports going on that the like talent is all mad and stuff, like you have a right to be mad. Like this is the talent that's still like out um shining you, so that's kind of very embarrassing. Oh boy, <laughs> Aisha, always fun talking to you. We got a couple of callers we want to get to, mm-hmm. but before we let you go, your high point and low point for tonight's show. Um, definitely the Triple H and Rick Flair segment. And my low mm. point, John Cena Rusev. I didn't even care. I didn't even watch the first twenty minutes, so. No, you're just like us. Yeah, good for you. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think any of us watch that segment. That's why we haven't talked about oh, it at all. It was going out to the U.S. title. Uh, <laughs> well, it's not going to make a difference. Yeah, I I don't know. It's it's it just seems like what they were building Rusev up for this whole time. So let's just get it over with, peel that band aid, so we can move on. Uh, speaking of moving mm-hmm. on, Aisha, we're going to move on to the next caller. Like I said, always fun talking to you. Call in any time. You have a mm-hmm. good night. Bye. Uh, you too, guys. Thanks. All right. 
already two fun callers here on the Raw Post Show <laughs> on <two>. Mega Powers Radio. <laughs> if you want to get yourself in line to talk to us here on the Raw Post Show on Mega Powers Radio, dial in with your phone, area code 760-512-7247, or you can also join us via Skype by hitting the Skype icon. Shout outs to those we got in the chat room too. Quiet night, but still some cool folks there. Wazili, Silent Window Doom, Ferris419, and back out! Good to have y'all in there. And I see a couple of guests. If you are listening to us and you are not yet registered with Blog Talk Radio, what the hell are you doing? Go register with Blog Talk Radio so you can join the chat room at the bottom and chat with all those cool folks. Fucking I just said. hell, what are you fucking doing? Fucking hell, that ain't right. Get yourself fucking registered. You fucking wankers. <laughs> you fucking bellends. Get your fucking registered. <laughs> um, uh, I, I came up with uh, what I thought was a freaking... Um, uh, a British insult, but I'm not sure if it actually is. It's it's pillock. Is that a British insult? Yes, it is. What does it mean? It means you're a pillock. <laughs> yeah, what <laughs> what a does pillock. it mean, though? You know what? You it bunch of fucking pillocks. <laughs> you the, fucking the Google insult. this shit. Is it a fish? <laughs> it's not a fish. Oh no. my god. So you're saying it's a not man, a fish? A man who has dropped a major bollock. Not necessarily a stupid block, rather one who has done a stupid act. You, you great Pollock, why the? F- oh my God! Someone goes fucking Pollock. Did you just say Pollock? He's not a fish. <laughs> Jackson Pollock. <laughs> yeah, just say said that fucking like wrestling journalist. You Kevin fucking Pollock. <laughs> Yo, I don't make the rules. Oh goodness gracious! All right, we're gonna get to some more callers here. Matter of fact, we got a, a favorite caller coming in here, <gasps> calling in a little late, but let's get him in here on the show. He's from the four one two. You know who he is. Oh. Um... JD, you there, bro? Michael, I was trying to reach you guys last week. Why didn't you guys pick up last week? Ah, I think you got in like at the last second as we were signing off, man. I'm sorry, but we got you on this week, dude. How you doing? Not too bad. How you guys been? What's oh, we're pretty good. Uh-huh. Oh, we're pretty good, man. It's it's been tough watching the Raws past these past few weeks, but uh, I think they picked up a little bit, and I'm hoping for a good show this Sunday. How you doing though? Yeah, I'm not doing too bad, despite the cold weather, though. I mean, I'm hanging in there. How I was just uh, agreeing with you on the sub points. I mean, there were some good, some good shows here and there. I mean, it wasn't a bad show tonight in Orlando. They put on a pretty decent crowd, however, and it was a good show. I just read something that was kind of alarming, though. However, mm-hmm. apparently there was a report saying that. Bray White is very, very sick. Apparently, he got sick after the show. <laughs> no tonight, shit, he's a however. twisted motherfucker. I mean, the guy like probably yeah, like but- eats worms. Well, it says here, I'm reading right now, this is no joke either. According to reports, I just read it just now, Bray Wyatt apparently puked all over the ring tonight during the dark what? match after the show. Yeah, it says, according to several social media reports, Bray Wyatt got sick following his match with Sean Cena after Raw tonight. The match saw Cena beat Wyatt with the attitude just after which Wyatt began vomiting. Some lady named Jesse Davin and called uh, Jesse the Buck on Twitter wrote, Bray Wyatt is not okay. He is really sick. Puked all over the ring during dark match. Hashtag Raw. <laughs> hashtag God. WWE Orlando. Hashtag Raw Orlando. And that was about 45 minutes ago when she sent that message in. Oh my so, yeah, God! He, yeah, I he's violently ill. So I imagine he's got some bugs. He must have picked up in the Middle East this weekend, or maybe he got sick earlier he's this got night. Hour after crash. those problems. But I mean, they were in the Middle East. But that's just scary because they're in Fort Lauderdale tomorrow, and they're in Nashville, Memphis, and Atlanta this coming week and next week. However, and uh, that's just alarming because you think about the Takers coming back possibly next Monday in Nashville to set up the match mm-hmm. with him and Bray Wyatt, and now him being sick. Our this is kind of a big question mark now to kick mm-hmm. off the feud with those two. Depends but, on what it uh, is. I mean, they haven't really had him doing anything too active on the shows. They don't need to have him do these dark matches. The last few weeks, he's really just been doing these backstage promos they could just pre-record those somewhere else if they need to and you know, sure, make, fix exactly. them up a little bit yeah just take it easy and get over the bug right exactly mm-hmm. but uh yeah i talked to your cohort jeff there 
on my other show just a little while ago. We were talking about our predictions for our fast lane. But, yeah, tonight was a good show. I mean, there were some good things tonight and everything. Oh, I thought they did okay tonight. I mean, I'm glad that at least that this week on SmackDown, you're not going to have J&J Security and Company Rollins. The they finally did something right. I did like the Triple H Flair promo. I thought that was fantastic. The only thing I didn't like, however, there were a couple twists about tonight I didn't like. The whole uh, arrogance of uh, – Daniel Bryan being the heel announcer when he was uh, having uh, Roman Reigns in that matchup with Kane. And then later in the night, Daniel Bryan, of course, was in the ring and Roman going heel on Daniel and the crowd. Let's just say by turning his back on him. But it was what it was. But it was a pretty good show, like I said tonight. Hopefully the Reigns will pick up on like last week where they really dropped. So I think they'll go up a little bit this week. And uh, like I said, we're still counting down the days to Fastlane, but more so we're counting down, down the days to WrestleMania. Oh, yes. California, here we come. Yes. And in just about three weeks from now, I'm counting down the days, too, because in three weeks, Rob will be in my neck of the woods, Pittsburgh, which is going to be a lot of fun. And I will be there. I will is that be there. Right, that's right tonight. before Mania? That's right before Mania? Yeah, March 9. March 9, they'll be in town. Because my brother-in-law turns 40 two days before my parents' anniversary is Thursday. March 7 is my brother-in-law's birthday on Saturday. Two days later on on Monday night, however, the first, second Monday in March, however, basically the week, eight days before St. Patty's they'll be in Pittsburgh because the next night they're in Detroit. Oh, that's a lot of stuff happening at the same time. My gosh. Tony, why don't and we March go to Pittsburgh Madness for Raw? on the corner, too. But uh, like I said, it was a good Raw, so... Uh, now that I'm back, however, since I didn't make it last week, however, hopefully we got to the bottom of that mystery unknown caller who pretended to be me. However, well, hopefully we finally got that clear up. Your, your good friend Jeff called in, it. and he, he tried to make a testimony. He brought up some good evidence. We do have someone trying to sort that out. We we didn't get anyone last week. I mean, we had just missed you, apparently, and we, we were worried we weren't going to get anyone this week either. So it seemed like something had just happened that drove everybody away. But it looks like we're still going on here. So why don't we do your favorite segment, the SJD, eh? Let's do it. Why not? I'm ready. Let's do it. All right. Drew, why don't you start off? I know you're always most excited for it. Oh, yes, I know. Drew, how you been? Uh, so my question. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is why we don't have Ask Drew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I'm asking, how, how you doing, though, Drew? Don't I'm doing that. my question. Don't do pretty good. good. No, huh? I'm not doing too bad. Uh, how was your Valentine's Day? That's my question. Oh. That was good. I was, well, that was a nice yeah. question. I mean, it was good. Yeah. I, took, I took my girlfriend to, to a college basketball game. I uh, thought we had good seats. I took oh, yeah, you there. mentioned that. Game. It was a Pittsburgh game, right? Yeah, the Pittsburgh North Carolina game. We had good seats. We went to a Chinese restaurant for dinner and watched a couple of movies back at my house, and it was a very nice uh, V day. Yeah. And uh, I got a roses and a nice card. And I got, uh, I don't know if you guys ever played this a game before. It's called Cards Against Humanity. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. We played it a few I just got it from her. I've been trying to get that game for the last six months. I finally got We Me and her played it one night with my brother and my sister, uh, her one, fr- my sister's friend's house, and we played that for an hour and a half one night while we were drinking beers. And we got so silly goo and everything like this was like last summer yeah i just got <laughs> from her as a valentine's gift yes, and i gave her flowers and a card it, we had a nice speed it was sweet. nice for us that's so sweet yeah see my my girlfriend uh doesn't like flowers and gift cards so but she does it. like cards against humanity uh, but she loves no she, she's never played it unfortunately what? Yeah, I, I, get her I to play, explain. man. Get her to play. What I know. Are you thinking? Get yeah, her, get her, and if she likes movies, get her the Judge or Alexander the Terrible, No Good, Horrible, Very Bad Day. Some good movies coming out on you want, DVD now. You wonder what we did on Fifty Shades of Grey. Uh, no, we were actually we were working to go see Fifty Shades of Grey with her sister because her sister just got broken up with by her boyfriend, but she didn't end up going. So we just stayed at my house all day and, oh, and watched. Uh, oh, hang on, sorry, hang on. sorry to hear that your relationship ended. You want to go see a movie about someone that is in a relationship? Yeah, exactly. No, <laughs> no, we in, in, in Tony, relationship. Tony, you like this. We ended up watching How I Met Your Mother all day. Good. Yeah, Better good. Choice. Yeah. Wait, was it? How I Met Your Mother TV show. She loves it. So we were. Oh, oh, well, How I Met Your Mother. Okay, good, good show. Okay. Yeah, that's Personally, good. I mean, I, there's a lot of shows I like on TV, not just Raw. I mean, I watch Shameless, Total Divas, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I never missed that show. Well, you've seen the like four yeah, shows in Aisha, at least. So. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, Drew's such a hater. <laughs> All right, Mr. Waco, you got some fresh JD Mr. this Wago, week? You're up, sir. So. Do you think Tony should have kept his beard? <laughs> was it a beard? Or was I didn't know he shaved the beard. beard. Why? How long was the beard grown? Was he like a uh, Fu Manchu, Grizzly Adams? I mean, I didn't hear what all the, the details here. What the, what the hell did you grow a beard for? It. Were you growing like a playoff beard of some kind or something, Tony? Or you just no, lazy? I, I, I was just uh, a cunt. 
didn't. I feel... think he was growing a beard until someone posted an article in Fanboys. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I'm still going to that one. <laughs> no, nah, I uh, didn't shave a couple days because I was just like, nah, I'll do it tomorrow. And then I realized that I didn't have enough time to do it. Went out and Dace got all upset because he thought that it was a one day beard and he can't grow one. So I just started oh. kind of growing it out just to piss him off. <laughs> Well, if he kept it longer than a day, if he kept it only one day, or he should have kept it more than longer a day, I think. I mean, let me ask you guys this. I mean, talking about playoff beers and whatnot, what is the longest you have gone without shaving? This time? This was <laughs> oh, period. Ooh, the I, longest me, I've ever gone shaving? For me, it was three weeks. For me, it was three weeks. I went three weeks one time without shaving. Three weeks. Stretch, so. oh, three weeks. Three weeks. So wow, three weeks. Yeah. That's like that's like, know, that's like my crazy. average time between three. shaving. I went can twenty I... years. I didn't fucking need to. No, can I back <laughs> out when I first started getting facial hair? Because when I first got my Mexican stash, my little beaner stash, I kind of didn't shave for like a year just because I wanted that little stash, and then I shaved it finally. Um, I'm gonna say that uh, since you know, other than when I wasn't shaving because I was too fucking young to. Yeah. The the longest I went was probably when I was in like my hermit phase where I was just like working out of my freaking office for like two years, and I like, never shaved that. I think my beard got like five inches long at one point, so I, I probably never actually trimmed it or shaved I... it. For, it had to have been like at least like eight months or something. At least I if you get the... twenty three inches, that'd be hard to take. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think the longest I've ever gone. But... A shaven might be a month, and that might have been just for uh, no shave November. I usually shave a lot. For no sh- okay. Usually shave in November. <laughs> is that the time you're not supposed to shave? No, 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 no. I go November, don't shave, and then as soon as it's December first, my girlfriend will be like, "Hey, Drew, you better shave that fucking beard now. Or I'm going to kill you." So then you I, shave I off. I can't picture you actually being able to grow a beard, Drew. I I bet you I bet you're the kind of guy who has like those three hairs that just come out on the chin. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I get a, I could get a mustache. I could get like mutton chops, and I could get like my neck and like <laughs> my, my chin. I don't get like all of my upper part of my chin towards my lips, but I could get a goatee if I wanted to. All right, we're gonna take a couple of questions right. out of the chat room here before. Uh, actually, no, Tony, you do you do yours first. I'm sorry. Uh, JD, did you check out the SNL 40th anniversary show? Yeah, I watched it last night. I actually enjoyed it. It was very, very good. I liked Melissa McCarthy doing uh, uh, Chris Farley. I thought uh, a lot of the cast was good. I mean, it made sense. I mean, the only thing that kind of I missed, though, in a way, and I think we kind of definitely might agree with this a little bit, Tracy Morgan. Tracy Morgan would have been nice to see on the show last night. But they had a lot of good moments and a lot of heartfelt moments, but it was fun last night. I enjoyed it. Even without Tracy Morgan. Even thought she's smart. Yes. I, now I have I have a question. I'm going to hold it off until I do a couple here out of the chat room, though. Uh, Bagod wants to know what you thought about the Seth Rollins versus Dolph Ziggler match tonight. It ended too soon because J and J sticking their nose, but I'm glad the referee sent them to the back. It made only sense. However, I mean, if it hadn't been for J and J sticking their nose in the whole thing, it could have gone 10 or 15 minutes. But now that they're going to be without uh, Rollins on Thursday night, how which they'll tape tomorrow night, how they could go 10 or 15 minutes. I feel. Uh, so Silent Wind of Doom, your good friend Silent Wind of Doom, asks, when is episode four of JD the Loose Cannon coming out? Actually, it's now out. Actually, it is in the loose canon. It's actually NXT. Uh, I, it's on my Facebook wall, actually, that I did on uh, Blog Talk Radio with LT. However, and the co-host LT and I actually broke down the NXT ri- uh, rival pay-per-view. However, believe it or not, however, from this past week, however, and we looked ahead to the next few weeks of NXT. We did a whole breakdown of the show from last Wednesday's uh, WWE Network show, the NXT show. So you might want to mm. check it out on. Uh, uh, blog talk radio so i have a question for you jd what do you think about them seth rollins photos huh <laughs> well you know what though a lot of people mark man was talking about it online how i mean i think seth rollins was an idiot number one for getting involved in that whole scenario however number two however i mean what was his girlfriend thing by posting the pictures there anyway however i mean i think he's going to get off with a warning however if you ask me but he should have uh some repercussions levied against him i think he's going to get off maybe with a slight slap in the wrist which i think is kind of bs but you know what though at the same time however it was his stupid fault in the first place this is absolutely true. But what would you think about the actual picture? 
I didn't see the actual picture. I remember see the, the actual picture of his girlfriend though more than him. His, Did his you see girlfriend that? was very very cute. His girlfriend that he's seen right now actually, uh, the one that I think uh, she's in NXT. Oh. She's a diva down there. I heard yeah. she's very very cute actually. Very mm-hmm. cute. Well, we all do. Naturally. You better be careful. You might want to keep those pictures away from your girlfriend there, JD. <laughs> well, if I, but, but I'll tell you right. But if I, but, but like I said, if you're talking hot girls right now in wrestling, however, I mean, the, not just the talking about the NXT brand. Her, there is one that is pretty good looking, and I will mm-hmm. definitely say it, it is Bailey. Oh, Bailey's adorable. She's kind of girl you want to bring she, home. She, she, she's she's a hugger. She, you gotta have a huggy girlfriend. But she's also a pretty damn good wrestler too. We saw what happened last week in that Fatal Four when she was with Charlotte, Sasha, and uh, Becky Lynch. So I mean, it's her gonna time say is she, gonna come eventually. She, she does a convincing the, belly to belly. Not many people can make that move look pretty devastating. Like her and Rick Steiner that's... and uh, oh, about yeah. it. Oh yeah, she 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 she. she, she, she She's a hard worker, and not to, <laughs> dis- discount, not to discount Charlotte either. I mean, I think her, mm. t- like I said, for weeks on end on the show, guys, and I said this on other shows, her time's coming up, I think, in WWE. You're going to see her up very, very soon. I think I think in the next few weeks you're going to see her come up. I hope they set up a match night between af- her night and after Mania. For Mania. Night after Mania, she's going to debut. I'm calling you that think, one now. I mm-hmm. think before, I'm calling it, I'm calling it before. I'll go one better. I'll call it before Well, te- technically she was on Raw yeah. like a couple months ago. Yeah, she was, and that's that's one that's one thing I will say right now. If you, and maybe people, someone will ask me about this. That's one thing that pissed me off about WWE. Yeah, they'll bring these people from NXT, but they won't put them on yet because they don't think they're ready. I'm sorry. There's a couple guys, like I said before, that are more than ready to make a jump to the roster. I think WWE's got to trim a good bit of the roster and start bringing up the NXT people, like the Zayans, the Bolors, the Nevels. You know, mm-hmm. bring those guys up. Tyler Breeze is even. All right, JD, before you go, I got one last bit of business I want to do here. I don't know if you know we do this, but every once in a while, we like to take a look back at an old show because, believe it or not, this show is a year and a half old, closing in on two years later this year. Amazing that we've been doing this for this long. We've had lots of great and times. I think I've been there, uh, and I think I finished since the beginning or close to the beginning when you said that. I, 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 it's, like, it's like a couple months after, but it was really close. Very, very close to the okay. beginning you've been calling it. Yeah, you're like one of the originals, dude. Okay. If, yeah, definitely one of the original callers in there. So um, yes. we, we've been doing lots of throwbacks, listening back to old moments that have happened. And, uh, well, I wanted to honor you, J.D., because I know you've been uh, a little frustrated with certain events that have been going on lately. So I went back and I dug through the archives and I found a fun time that we had with you on the air. And I'm going to play it. So I hope you Go dig it. Go for it. I'm ready. I think right now, Ziggler right now has got a good push going for him at the moment, however. And Hello? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Hello? 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 Who's this? Uh, Who's no, that was, uh... I don't know why I'm we had a third... I up a phone. Is it in J.D.'s house? Yeah, it sounds like it. Oh, maybe J.D.'s wife. J.D.? Garrett? Yeah, All right, he's got a phone call, so we'll, uh, we'll let no, him he got go a phone there. call, or was he, was he on the computer or his regular phone, man? He was on his phone like me. I don't know. He probably, he probably tried to switch over to call waiting or something. And, um, that was like so, Paul uh, picking up. <laughs> J.D., are you there? Yeah, sorry about that, guy. Uh, yeah, I'm here, guys. Sorry about oh, that. Was that your wife me. or your girlfriend? No, that was my mom. Oh, your mom. <laughs> Yeah, good times. Pain, pain, you son of a bitch. I didn't, <laughs> that's a good one. That was with me. That was my mother calling me one night, however, when I was on the air with uh, uh, Lou and uh, Hollywood Tony P of uh, uh, Hockey Wrestling with Hollywood and Lou. Oh, my God. I can't believe we dug that one up. Good job. Good job. Bravo. Uh, like, well, I'm going to pro- about that. I'm not going to yeah, no, pro- pro- Props one. to you for having a good sense of humor about it, J.D. You're a good guy. Thank you. Oh, dude, we're so glad this- to have you. I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right, JD, that we got another good. caller on the line here, but uh, always good to have you on, man. Glad we got you on this evening. You have a good night. Enjoy Fast Lane, man. All right, guys. I'll talk to you next one. Have a good rest of the week. Talk to you soon. You too. Take care, too. <laughs> 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 Nice. Uh, uh, I forget who pointed that one out to me. If it was Ferris, Surface, Silent Wind of Doom, it was one of you guys. Thank, thank you so much. <laughs> 
Uh, that was actually a fun call with JD. Thank you for calling in, JD. Genuinely, that was that was a fun call. Everyone's been fun tonight. We've actually had a really good show so far. We talked a bit about wrestling. We haven't had too much nonsense. People are actually like having fun tonight. It's good. So uh, why don't we continue the fun here and let's bring on one of our uh, regular fans who's been calling in a lot lately. He's calling in from the 419. I don't have entrance music for him yet, but you know him as Ferris419. What's shaking, Ferris? Maybe. Actually, this is someone else. <gasps> oh, I'm sorry. Well, who's calling from the 419? <laughs> you got so excited. <laughs> I'm Ferris's partner in crime. Oh, no. Ferris Angela. And, and what kind of crimes? <laughs> Um, let's just say he's not the only one sitting watching the chat room. He's the <laughs> one who has the computer. Oh, okay. I've been listening with Ferris the whole time. Oh, sometimes no. telling him what to type. Oh, so that's why he's actually he's, fu- he's actually oh, funny what you're sometimes. Saying is, Ferris is your bitch. So, so um, what you're saying is you're well, the higher we power. Of, we sort of share it. <laughs> It was Angela. Like all I said, we're partners. It was me. It was me, Mega Powers. <laughs> <laughs> what's up, Angela? <laughs> uh, what, what, what's oh on your God. mind tonight, Angela? Um, actually, the first thing I oh, just yeah. wanted to call out Steve. Uh oh. He has a responsibility <laughs> when someone calls, and he has just not been living up to it. Uh oh. What's that? Man. Especially tonight. What's one of the first things? Oh, he's not going to win the Nobel Prize. (laughs) The book, the book, a book. (laughs) A good book, Dylan, right there. (laughs) It's a good fucking book, brother. Book it up, good book, guys. To do when, uh, when he hears the word, he is supposed to do something. Okay, in my defense. I'm heavily under the influence of drugs. <laughs> <laughs> and, and to be fair, that it bell has been taking matter. a beating for months are. now. Well, see, that bell has been taking accounts. way too bad of a beating. See that bell? They could make a movie kind of like Fifty Shades of Grey about the beating that bell has been taking the last couple months, but it would be way too violent. I don't think anyone would go see <laughs> 30 that. Thirty Shades of That's what dogs. it sounded like tonight. That he yeah, was, I was just beating it. I was hitting the fuck out of that thing. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you think about our? Uh, did you hear? Did you hear our throwback? What? The, the, did you hear the raw throwback when we played an old sound clip for JD there? Yes, yes, I did. Actually, uh, Ferris called me down because I wasn't in the room <laughs> to listen to it. I re- no, he was the one that told you about it because he had gone back listening to it. Oh, pro- props to Ferris then. Thanks, buddy. It. Uh, he's, he's been so and, good to this show. Yeah, we, you both have. Uh, I'm sorry. I, sh- I got to give you credit, too, since you're the higher power. Yeah, you're the, you're the fairest in the chat <laughs> that we all love. Oh, no, well, Zeely's um, telling us that uh, the Howevers oh, reached 30 tonight. That's 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 really high. So is Wego. Ooh. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, Angela. <laughs> Continue what you were saying, Angela. Um. God, now I don't remember. I'm, ah! oh, I'm not exactly sure how long we've been listening to you, but I, oh, you guys, I just fell in love with you Aww. after like 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I, know, I, I listen. Of... I l- Go on. She's, she's trying to like confess her love for us, Wago. Let her talk. Group of friends that I lost. Oh no! What happened to them? I <laughs> listened to our yeah, show. Every, everyone's <laughs> moved away. You know, Aww. I would just love to meet up with you guys Aww. and have a nice drink you know can we have cake instead play cards against humanity uh i really really do not like hanging out with girls girls yo. annoy the shit out of me yo seriously let's talk about this girls what the fuck is up with you I know, why you gotta right? make everything so fucking difficult huh like valentine's day is over we don't need to have all that mushy shit no more let's be real here Girls, you're tough to hang out with. You fucking complain about everything. Yeah, I, whenever we I try to fix it, you just keep complaining you. more and more. You don't even watch TV shows, Aisha. Like, come on. <laughs> well, no, no, you don't even watch. Chrissy knows best, but that was your problem. Okay, I went off on a rant there. Oh. I'm sorry. Actually, went off the I deep end. Really watch too much TV. Yeah, how many shows you watch? Yeah, yeah, she reads books. Obviously, come on. <laughs> <laughs> this conversation is fucking retarded. Yeah. 
this is your first time calling in. You already well, fit I in quite well. In. No, it's good to hear the voice. By, I, 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 I see you posting thought... in the uh, Mega Maniacs group a lot, so it's good to, to get a, a voice to the face. Yeah, I'm surprised he started letting me post on that. <laughs> oh, now now he I lets you do stuff? I thought me, you give him. He's wanted me to stay quiet. Oh. Aww. What the fuck, Aww. Ferris? Can't hold you back forever. Can't stop no, now. I just can't. Ain't no stopping her now! You can stop first. What? Jonna, I need more weed. <laughs> you bring up the idea, though, of uh, meeting up with a bunch of Mega Powers people and, you know, getting the whole crew and all that other kind of stuff, though. Um, something that we have talked about before is anytime that we do our conventions, which we're trying to plan out for the future for Fanboys Anonymous. That, uh, you know, if we're ever in the area of different people and stuff like that, it would always be cool to just meet up with people. So that's Yo, definitely something we'll to keep in mind. have to get through some flame repellent chairs first. <laughs> okay. Well, yes. <laughs> Comic-Con's always an option, but yo, who's sure. going to Texas? Let's go to Texas. Woo! Texas. Yeah, we gotta go that's get that's Jeff from Texas first. I think first. we actually live pretty close to Drew. Oh, oh that sucks. This <laughs> is... Of all the places you want to be, you were supposed to true. So, do you go to the same gas station? I know. <laughs> uh, I actually don't know that much about Drew, except that you just rip how him do you, apart sometimes. How, how do you like? How do you expect to know anything about him? So, Drew, tell us something about yourself. <laughs> So I'll, I'll be on the record there. That wasn't me talking. That is them. So. <laughs> yeah, but it's a very good impersonation. It's, it's almost as good as our impersonation of Sean. Fuck you, now. You want to hear my impersonation? <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, bro. Jonah. Who's Jonah? <laughs> yeah, who's Jonah? <laughs> Jonah. Jonah Ark. Well. <laughs> you There's should not work out, Drew. Oh, I'm so glad else. I called. How? Uh -oh. Why? Because we talk about shit with you constantly. Like, nobody knows the best restaurants in my area, but we know that uh, Red Lobster kicks ass around you. <laughs> Red Lobster is like the greatest fucking place ever. Oh, yeah, you can good. eat seafood and seafood on. You can eat chicken that's cooked in seafood. Yo, and you can, you can get those chicken. pina coladas in those really tall plastic cups. I went to Olive Garden on Saturday. That was fun. We got <laughs> carry out. <laughs> no, no, just, just incredible. Just incredible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, shitty wrestler, Jamie Noble. No, wait, just because. No, wait, no, Jamie Noble actually has a job right now. <laughs> uh, did you see the whole ECW roster? <laughs> Tell me one of them. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. You know, just as I was saying that we didn't have too much insanity on the show tonight, looks like we had to get our fill in. Did you see what you did by calling in? <laughs> ruined it. <laughs> yes, yes, I did. Fucking hell. Oh, plus I wanted to give you, you know, the rare occurrence of two girls calling in and one show. I, I, I didn't want to have to be that guy to point that out, but yeah, holy shit. What the fuck is going on? Yeah, two we should just label podcast. this. Yeah, I was just going to say two girls, one Fuck show. Fucking hell, you live in Toledo. Fucking oh, hell, that's a bit of a rude title. Playoff, you know what? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Angela, let me ask you, out of all of our antics, what's your favorite joke? It's obviously no more pressure. Well... Is it what we ripped through? I don't, I don't know why, but Neither do we. <laughs> I've always loved that bell. Oh, the bell! And lately, I will never, never forget pretzel sprouts. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm I ever actually am in an opportunity, when I heard that, if there's ever actually Brussels sprouts in front of me, it's always going to be pretzel sprouts from now on. Yeah, what the fuck, Drew? Yeah, <laughs> when are we going to be exactly. going to talk show Hall of Fame? That's going to be like a first entry right there. Show hasn't even been out for a month yet. We can't it's have the a other day at the store. That's what we called them. Well, you know, uh, and you know, your your man, he's on a good track to uh, to win that however bell, to be able to enshrine it on your mantle forever. Yeah, who's going to sign it? Yes, if you have a mantle. Do it. Well, he knows what he has to do. He has to complete the uh, yes, and we, uh, the ritual. <laughs> We have started. We're, we're working on it. planning it out. <laughs> if you guys win it, I will sign the bell and send you a letter of why Vaporeon's better than your favorite Pokemon. Ooh. 
That, that's a double package there. That's added. Oh. That wasn't there before. He's adding a letter. Hand, handwritten? Oh, don't even start. If I handwrite it, she won't be able to fucking understand it. <laughs> I don't think she's going to be able to fucking understand it anyway. <laughs> write it in Sean's voice. Fuck it out, Vaporeon. Fuck it out. I'm writing this letter to let you know that Vaporeon's the best, you fucking cunt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, si Silent with a Doom actually says his favorite joke is Bob Core Holly. Yeah, because uh, he's still fucking like the, he's like the only Miguel fan left. Yeah, you look All I can say... <laughs> All I can say is that you guys should be paying attention to the rest hold for the next few weeks. <laughs> indeed, indeed. The rest hold of the Mac Spec Talk Show. <laughs> <Mother> <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> <Announcement>. <laughs> okay. It's not a good Oh my gosh. Angela, this has been an incredible call. Um, before you go, though, I want to ask you if you actually have anything to say about Raw tonight. <laughs> Do you have a high point, low point for it? It is a post show for the world. What? Well, Actually, the only, since we don't have cable, we have oh. to try and find it on the internet. Wow. And since I didn't have the computer, I was only listening to it. And oh. I only got to hear the last uh, match. Mm -hmm. And I was getting updates from Ferris. Mm. And it sounded wonderful. What? what? You the guys can't, like, share the computer? Doing. You poor bastard! All you could hear was Michael uh, just Cole. Just distracting with the crowd, and <laughs> <laughs> that, that's like the worst way to experience that. Is just hearing Michael Cole and Booker T. Oh my goodness! <laughs> oh <Jokey, jokey, quack, laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that that is one thing I don't like about just listening to it. <laughs> oh, you remember? Unfortunately, we didn't get it on when it happened, but I would have loved. To have seen the little incident with Paige. Oh, yeah. That was awesome. <laughs> that didn't sound creepy at all, did it? <laughs> it was meant now, to be. She is the only one I find even semi attractive to me. Thank you. She is fucking gorgeous. I don't know why I said thank you. Like, it's a compliment to right, me. Right, yeah. Oh, jeez. I thought it was Roman Reigns you have a crush on. Damn, what, what the hell is this coming from? I can have crushes on multiple people. Fucking hell. You can Reigns be pissed off. What year is this? Angela! I might You're... not like being with girls. Mm -hmm. They are very annoying, but some of them are sexy as hell. Let me let, now let me ask you, what do you think about Leonardo DiCaprio? Um, he can burn in hell for all I care. What? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? The fuck? I really actors, some um, celebrities, yeah. Depends who they are and what they've done. He done. Yeah, who hasn't he done? <laughs> People he hasn't wanted to yet, that's who. What do you think about the Seth Rollins pictures, then, if you're <laughs> asking everybody else this? Yeah, I guess as well. Or, 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 well. Or, 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 yeah, oh. or, or maybe Ferris is hogging the computer for those, too. <laughs> Actually, yes, I have not seen them. Oh, I guarantee you Ferris has. No, Ferris, show her. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Oh, the All right, no, yeah, Ferris, please, while she's on the phone, pull up the Seth Rollins picture. Let's get her live reaction to this picture right now. Let's do this. We'll, we'll pull uh, it up now. He says All right. he hasn't seen them either. Let's Someone up in the chat room. Silent Window Doom, you have him. Pull it up. <laughs> <laughs> this has okay, to happen. Hold on. I, I found the Deadspin article. Sure. There it is. I'm on my way. <laughs> there you go. In the chat. Some pictures okay. of dick. Let me see them. They're coming up. <laughs> oh, he's God. coming up, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did not want to see that one. Wow. Uh, I especially like... Was, uh, saying, you're right, he does seem to have a pretty small package. <laughs> I especially like the one that's like a silhouette of like the sun setting in the background of his dong draped over himself. <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> it's very artistic. It's like a... I wanted to show off my artsy side with this dong uh... shot. <laughs> well, there you go, folks. Live on the air. First time someone's seeing Seth Rollins' dong. Yeah, more we'll quality so entertainment like this every week. <laughs> the name of the article is Let's All Look at Seth Rollins' Dog. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> well, at least he right to the chase, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> that escalated quickly, huh? <laughs> hey, this stuff's cock. <laughs> at least it's not clickbait. <laughs> Oh, goodness. All right. All right, Angela, we're going to wrap this up. Unless you got something else on your mind. Now she probably just got such a dick on her mind now. (laughs) (laughs) And Angela, it's very good talking to you here. You're always welcome to call in. You can always steal it from Ferris anytime. I'm trying to. (laughs) You have a good night, guys. You enjoy Fastlane. Good night. That was a bloody well right phone call, weren't it? Oh, yeah, fuck, fuck you, you fucking was. We had a lot of good fucking calls this week. Yeah, it was fucking better than last week. There was all a bunch of fucking nonsense. I don't understand a bit yeah, of that. Yeah, a bunch of fucking pillocks last week. <laughs> fuck you, yeah. This has become That's... my favorite impression. <laughs> it's a really fun voice. <laughs> it's not like... even short at this point. Well, like, I remember how much fun it was just doing right when yeah. that's all we had. Just go right, 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 right. But now we have, like, a full voice to put it with. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, you know what? Actually, I was trying to place where I had used that voice before. Because, like, I know I had done that voice saying something else before. And I finally placed it. Do you guys ever watch those old G.I. Joe overdubs they did? Oh, God. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, the the one where, like, they're on the ice and the kid slips. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? You kids do it on my fucking lawn. Yeah. Don't look at me when I'm fucking talking to you. Yeah, the kid slips in. He's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> give him the stick. Don't give him the stick. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> so that's where I think that voice great. came from in my head. Oh, all those. Who wants a body massage? <laughs> hey, kid, I'm a computer. <laughs> <laughs> Stop all the downloading. <laughs> those are fucking amazing. <laughs> I'm glad we got to bring those up before the show starts. <laughs> How about um, that wrestling show, huh? <laughs> Hey, we talked a lot about wrestling tonight. Listen, the last few weeks, actually, we've actually gotten on our game with our wrestling talk. Like, we got a really nonsensey there for a while. Yeah. Yeah, we can figure out a way to be charismatic, entertaining, talk about wrestling. I mean, you'd have to be a not-so-genius to fucking dislike this show, right? <laughs> I don't know, man. It's not like the show has something awesome like the Ask Him on it or anything. Uh, well, you know, I can't talk about it originating that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mango went into Hank Hill at the end there. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> now I want to see Hank Hill with fucking G.I. Joe. <laughs> Give me that crossover and I'll fucking finally watch King of the Hill because I hated that show. Oh, Jesus Christ. Fucking cynical Tony. Always cynical yeah, dude, about that it, show right? kicks ass. What's going to be, gonna be your bad point tonight, Tony? The show? King of the Hill. <laughs> oh, Touché. oh, yo, Ferris Forward Knight's got a point. We actually have something better than the Ask Kid. We have Ask JD. Oh, uh, yeah. That's true. Well, he probably Cause, made that one up, too. Because him is so ambiguous. Like, I'd rather ask someone specifically. You know? You got to specify. Mm-hmm. No, Smack Dog is Plus, bad. him is kind of like sexist. You know? Like, what if it's a her? What if it's Angela? What if we want to ask Angela something? Mm-hmm. Maybe we should make that a segment. Ask Angela. Uh, I thought you were going to oh. say Ask Angela something. Just we could tackle. So double A. Ask Angie. <laughs> Angie's list. No, call yeah, Angie's list. <laughs> <laughs> Is Angie's gas station next to Andy's gas station? Oh. No. Yeah, she, she took over. Wow, this show has officially hit absolute <laughs> fucking nonsense levels. So I think it's about time we wrap things up. We got about twenty five minutes left, but I don't think we got anything left to fucking say. So. Do we even want to do a fucking good, bad, and ugly? No one actually has a good, bad, and ugly set, right? No, I just have a couple of stupid notes. I had, funny. I had notes as well, but eh, whatever you want to do. All right, Drew, you want to do a good, bad, and ugly? Go ahead. No. I'm well, not even playing the music. You just go ahead. No, I was going to do two goods. One good, I was going to say. We didn't, talk, we, well, we didn't talk about uh, gold and star. I don't know if those were mentioning, but I thought that was a good. I liked that. And then mm-hmm. I liked uh, primetime players. My bad, obviously, was Kane, and my ugly was Man, big, the big we actually slow. didn't talk about a lot of stuff. We didn't talk about the roads. We didn't talk about the Triple H, uh, Ric Flair segment too much. We, we didn't, didn't talk, talk about, about the big May... event coming May 13th. Yeah, May 13th. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, shit, that shit's going to get down, you know. What a fucking <laughs> idiot. Oh what about God. May 13th, huh, Kane? Yeah. Huh, Kane? What about May 13th? Kane, you want to oh, fuck God. with me? Well, how about this? Random Wednesday in the summer. Let's do it. <laughs> I hope Fair shows in Angela the chat right now. I so now, hope so. Now a bunch of people are going to search up WWE May phone team, get nothing. What the fuck, idiots? Like, do you think do you think that was him missing the date up, or do you think like the writers fucked the date up? 
I, I think, think that he's just privy to this information that something awesome is happening then, and this is them setting it up and foreshadowing May 13th. Her psycho May 13th, that date that had nothing to do with anything? Yeah. Uh, what day of the week is May 13th? Let's, let's get Wednesday. to the bottom of this. Is it Wednesday? Yeah. You already did this? <laughs> yeah, I double-checked right before I said that. <laughs> well, all right then. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, so NXT? <clears throat> NXT was fucking awesome. I'm so happy if Sasha Banks won that title. I'm talking about Wednesday. Like a boss. May 13th, I, NXT. Yeah, oh, it's when big... it's going to debut oh, so on NXT. Gonna... It's big when Show Big Show and Kane. Kane. Yeah, Big Show and Kane are going to come out and just dominate over the entire NXT roster. Yeah. Well, might as well. They did the Royal Rumble. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I'm going to get rid of that tag team of Bam. Bam? <laughs> Blake and. Uh, oh, that's Bam. what they're calling them now? No. Thank I just you. Wait, Bam, is that what they're calling uh, Blake and Murphy now? No, that's just as soon as I thought they were going to call him, as soon as I saw that. I, Man, I I'm, so, I'm so glad we've got time card. I don't know what we do without it. Mm -hmm. All right, with that, guys, I think we could uh, do our plugs and get the fuck out of here. So, uh, Drew, got any plugs to plug? Well, happy days, all. Fuck you now. Shaughnessy t at, at Shaughnessy2k37. <laughs> You can follow me on Twitter and at Facebook. I have like five Twitter accounts, but I don't know them off the top of my head. I'm never prepared. Folk, you know, YouTube, Happy Pope Gaming Productions, you know, good shit. We're not doing anything right now. Fucking Nintendo. God damn it. Sluts. Cunts. And then you can go on Facebook, Happy Pope Gaming Productions. It is what it is. I love you, Sean. You're that family guy joke that runs on too long. You mean all of them? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Way you go. Chicken. To find all the little projects that I'm involved with, you can just go to stephenwaygo.com. You'll find everything you need to know about UDMMA, Addicted to Anime, and, of course, Wago Rants. Still saying you should have went with Wagopedia. Um, I'm thinking about getting a second URL, but some fucker will take it now that I've said that. <laughs> no, we're getting on it right now. Yeah, I gotta yeah. fight back. I mean, somebody took AnthonyMango.com the day before I bought it. <laughs> wow, really? Yeah, it was a fucking asshole move. I don't know who did it, because uh, they had some bodybuilding thing or something, but uh, I was like, I said it like multiple times. I'm like, all right, like Friday or something, I'm gonna buy that. And then I click on it Thursday. It's perfectly fine. Go on Friday. It's fucking registered. Like, this is bullshit. What are the fucking odds? You can yeah. be right. like Fandango when he was Fandango and just had an extra seat. Yeah. <laughs> Anthony Mangu. So All right, terrible. Tony. Uh, so what can you plug that isn't AnthonyMango.com? <laughs> SmartOutMoment.com, of course. Guys, check out Smack Talk, uh, iTunes, Stitcher, and YouTube. Go to the All Talk Show on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, all those kind of avenues like that. And FanboysAnonymous.com, which is all over the place too. There's a thousand links on each website, so just so click around and you'll come across a lot of stuff to follow. All right, folks, if you enjoyed this edition of the Raw Post Show on Mega Powers Radio, you should be joining us every single Monday night live after Raw goes off the air. Set your browsers to megapowersradio.com where you'll join us for the most interactive post-Raw experience available. We got phone lines, chat rooms, and us talking ourselves, keeping things fun. Always craziness happening here. You never know who's going to call in or what type of insanity is going to happen. However, if you cannot join us live, we like to make the show available for you in lots of different avenues. We are on iTunes. We're on Stitcher Radio. We're on YouTube. And we are on SmartOutMoment.com where you can easily find links to all those other places. And check out lots of other great wrestling content. And for other wrestling content, also check out KeepingKFave.com, a podcast celebrating the history of wrestling and pet matches from the past. Also check out some other projects I got by heading to my Twitter at M R P A D E N. That's Mr. Payton for all things involving Mr. Payton. Until next week, folks. Hope you enjoyed this show. Hope you enjoy Fastlane, and we'll see y'all next time here on the Raw Post Show for Stephen Wago, for Drew White, for Anthony Mango. My name is Mike Payton. We'll see y'all next week. <laughs>